Welcome to the only daily research news video report. This is Research Business Daily Report, where we are sponsored today and this week by Nuance offering multi-language verbatim coding services for clients to help them quantify the meaning of open-ended answers. Nuance, a decision analyst company. We've been at the market research event this week, which has given us the chance to greet many of the research industry's most influential personalities, such as Decipher Inc. President Kristen Luck, who spent a good part of her time here in Boca Raton investigating new technological offerings for our industry, and she discussed some of those with us. So here in Boca Raton at the market research event, there are obviously a lot of technology companies and a number of new ones. And, and what do you see trend-wise going on here, if anything? Yeah, it's interesting because I think for the first time ever, I'm seeing more and more sort of te technology companies and more non-research firms um, exhibiting here, for one. Also, if you look, for instance, this morning, we handed out the Next Gen Market Research Awards for Disruptive Innovation. And, you know, two of the companies that were winners, Rewe and Social Glimpse, you know, weren't even in business, at least not in the market research industry, you know, five years ago. So mm -hmm. definitely we're starting to see more outside disruption and more innovation and I think a better use of technology that's developed for other purposes but then being repurposed for market research. So these are technology companies that are looking for a research uh, niche to fill. Correct, yeah. And I think there's more opportunities for that than ever before. I mean, I think there's more focus in the industry on data visualization. I think there's more focus on social media and really looking at different ways where we can harness, you know, that secondary sort of data source versus just relying solely on primary data. I think as a pro and the con, I like your opinion about this, about these technology companies that I just described as not having a research you know, function quite yet. On the one hand, yeah, they can kind of be flexible enough if they're good enough and find a place. But if I'm a venture capitalist putting money into a company and that company is coming to a research event, it would seem to me you go there with a research context in mind. Right. Well, that being said, I, I feel like there have been more technology companies successful at picking up on research than there have been research companies successful at picking up technology. And so I think it's, I think the research skill set is, is perhaps easier learned and I'm sure there's a lot of people that will disagree with me on that. Yeah. But I do feel like it's, I, I feel like traditionally it's been tougher for the research firms to really embrace and adopt new technologies. And so I think that there's, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely a, a, a meeting point there somewhere in the middle. And there's a lot of research companies that are very much me too. So they don't really have a strong research connection either. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think a perfect example of like a traditional research company, you know, um, embracing that that technology company is in with Nielsen's recent acquisition of Afanova. I mean, Afanova was one of the award winners today for disruptive innovation, and they've done an amazing job creating their optimizer product. Um, and obviously, Nielsen realizes that and is also realizing that, hey, you know, we need to be embracing and adopting new technologies in order to really push our, our company into the future. And they're also, from having had some discussions with them, uh, listening more closely to their clients who are saying, hey, can you help us with this research need that we have, which ordinarily would have been out of Nielsen's realm, like uh, their acquisition of Harris Interactive because right. they needed to be able to do surveys domestically. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I think the, the clients are driving a lot of the demand and, and for research firms it's going to be up to them to figure out you know, how do we how do we address this demand and how we deliver against it and sometimes the easiest way to do that is by acquiring a technology company that maybe knows more in that space than you do and then how do you apply those traditional research practices on top of it. What's your level of optimism about um, coming up with an industry solution to m make sense of social media research. I mean, it's going to happen eventually. I think we, we all know that. But are we talking three years, five years, maybe even longer? What, what do you think? You know, I don't think it's going to be any longer than three years, personally. I mean, um, I think the biggest challenge in terms of utilizing social media data and connecting that with primary research is that people love the idea of doing it but can't really articulate what it is that they want to get out of that data. So yes, I want my social media data and I want my to see my brand mentions, but then how does that correlate to what I'm finding in my primary research? So it's about finding those meaningful connections and I think in a lot of instances, at least we're, what we're seeing is that people have a hard time articulating what it is that they actually want to get out of it. 
Thanks to Kristen for her time and her insights. That's your Research Business Daily Report sponsored by Nuance offering multi-language verbatim coding services to help their clients understand the meaning of open-ended answers. Nuance, a decision analyst company, has set up a website so that you can find out more about the product. It's www.nuancecoding.com. We hope you have a great research day and rest of your research week and that you'll have an enjoyable weekend and then that you'll join us back here on Monday.